Welcome to Crypto in Africa webinar, courtesy of Crypto in Africa and Design Africa. This session has been proudly sponsored by BitCasino.io in conjunction with Sportbet.io, the number one crypto betting casino and sportbook in Africa. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Nick Kanali. I'm a tech editor uh, for Tech Transmedia. And what we've been doing over the last couple of months is basically trying to talk about crypto, talking about blockchain, and the direction Africa is taking when it comes to adoption of crypto will be the Crypto in Africa podcast, you know, stock webinar. And we've had interesting conversation talking to very various industry leaders, you know, on you know CBDC, talking about peer-to-peer, -peer, and basically, you know, all other conversations. Anyone who wants to know about crypto adoption in Africa. And today is an interesting topic we're gonna to be discussing about NFTs, which of course, you know, might not be really a common name to maybe most of us or anyone doesn't follow crypto closely but of course you know i'm hoping brian who's i'm gonna let us tell us you know take us through all this topic and everything we need to know so yeah my name is nick Kanali, as i said and thank you for joining us so our good starting point will be today we only have one panelist adam and i'm gonna let him introduce himself so brian can you introduce yourself and tell us what to do yeah i'm quite obliged to be part of this session um the topic is quite interesting there's so much happening in the blockchain space, the crypto space. And I've been privileged to work with, um, I think more than six companies mm -hmm. uh, that are blockchain and crypto based uh, that uh, mostly are international and some are uh, African based. So yeah, the journey has been amazing. Uh, my name is Brian Adams Courier. I'm also uh, a crypto educator uh founder of cryptocurrency academy yeah and currently the community manager at coinmara so that is a little bit about me and yeah i'll also like to thank everyone who has jumped in today and also thank the zin for this of uh, crypto africa for this opportunity so right. back to you all right thank you so much brian glad to get to understand what you do and you know i do bother about yourself and as i said you know nft is, is not really a common you know common topic or a common name that you know for example most people uh, you know, really will actually really understand so maybe again a good starting point would be basically to understand what nft is um and being an expert in, the, in this industry you know how would you describe to layman what an nft is okay thank you so much next one so NFT is technically um, is an abbreviation for non-fungible tokens. Yes. And um, if you're familiar with cryptocurrencies, the term token is quite familiar. So probably I could start with a token, what a token is. Um, a token is uh, an asset or a piece of data that uh, normally runs on another uh on a network so for example we have ethereum and um the network is ethereum and on the ethereum network we have uh, many tokens that have been launched on, on, on top of them mostly they are erc20 tokens so um, as for the non-fungible token it means that it's a piece of data that can be added on different networks using a certain standard so the difference between the non-fungible token and the normal token that we know of is that we find that with the non-fungible tokens, uh, it's easy to transfer ownership. It's easy to, you know, um, probably put a price on it, but you cannot, it's, it's not that easy to probably exchange hands or pro probably send it uh, to an exchange mm -hmm. and sell it like the way people sell Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. So there's a clear depiction between the normal token we know of and the non-fungible tokens. So uh, as for non-fungible tokens, it's simply a piece of data that mm. is added on the blockchain and it's actually very verifiable and also proves authenticity uh, of the ownership. So that is how I can put it in the most simplistic way possible. That is what a non-fungible token is. It's a piece of data or information added on the blockchain um, yeah. using specific standards. 
Yeah. Okay, interesting. And actually, you know, it's interesting because NFTs have been there since, you know, way back since 2014. And definitely starting to gain popularity and influence right now uh, in Africa because, you know, of course, you know, they're becoming, you know, uh, they're becoming, you know, uh, increasingly popular way to buy into the digital world. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, of course, I said 2014. So, and moving back to 2022, why is this popularity so much growing, you know, especially in Africa? I was reading a report from The Guardian the other day, and they're talking about how in 2021 collectors and debtors and traders actually spent, uh, you know, about 22 billion on NFTs. You know, of course, that's up from around, you know, uh, from around, uh, you know, $100 million in 2020. You know, why is this popularity growing in Africa, especially in Africa? Okay, thank you so much, Nixon, for that. I mean, the entire, um, yeah, it's true. NFTs are quite new, but they're gaining um, mainstream adoption. It, it all started as a joke. From mm. CryptoKitties back in 2017, um, CryptoKitties became very popular. People could sell some online cards, some digital cards that could be able to breed with one another. And people are selling them for a huge amount of Ethereum. Yeah. So fast forward to 2020, 2021, 2022, the term NFT started becoming popular um, through uh, different people, uh, such as Jack Dorsey, who sold his first tweet um, as an NFT. Mm -hmm. And from there, the whole non-fungible token thing started getting adoption. But at the end of the day, the basis is that you can verify that you are the original uh, person who was able to probably mint this specific data on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So why it's gaining so much traction is because that you can verify. Traditionally, you could create a piece of painting and probably to be very hard for you to, you know, uh, prove that you are the original owner. So yeah. NFTs, what non-fungible tokens do is they make it possible for the original owner to prove that he or she was the original minter since there's always a timestamp uh, if you upload a piece of data let's let's say it's a screenshot of mm -hmm. what is happening right now right this session we can take a screenshot upload it probably on some nft platforms mint it and there will be data that this happened it was at this time um and this is the person who verified it and if you if crypto africa decides to sell it they can do it. They can put a bid on it, probably 0.5F or whichever cryptocurrency that they would like. Probably if you're on Solana, probably could be 200 souls. Mm -hmm. whichever, whichever network or whichever cryptocurrency is supported on that platform, you can sell it. Yeah. So it's getting so much traction. There's NFTs in that, NFTs in gaming, mm -hmm. um, NFTs in music. I mean, the industry is so huge. And right now we are seeing so many people, especially in music, yeah. musicians out there coming into the NFT space. Mm -hmm. They're selling their albums as NFTs in Kenya. Recently, uh, Octopizo launched his album as an NFT yeah. and it was mm -hmm. quite exciting. And many other people out there are also doing it. Um, I think Big Sean has also done it. Uh, I think this other guy, a few people have, are doing it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's a whole dance to it. I even seen Don Jazzy doing the same one thing. Yeah, even Don Jazzy, yeah. yeah. And there's a whole sense to it. It's not just uploading uh, data and being able to sell it. Mm -hmm. It's an entire market that one should, if, if there's anyone who's listening, um, it's something that you can choose to pursue as a career. And it's quite interesting. So, and that is why I'm also very excited that you're talking about it today. Oh, interesting. Uh, I hope I answered you know, Because, you know, uh, I, get, I mean, you, you said, you know, something about proof, proof of ownership. And of course, you know, we're living in a wild where copyright is a, it's, it's a big thing, yeah? And, and when I see, you know, uh, artists and, and artists, you know, musicians actually now using NFTs, I need to be able to prove this is my original work. Without, without worrying about, you know, for example, someone else, you know, uploading the same. And, and, and just let me take you back. Have we had cases of, for example, artists, you know, uh, having their... Uh, they are working together, being sold. Yeah, actually, so is it Kipchoge Kano was doing it? Yeah. He sold, yeah, he sold some of his art pieces as NFTs. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that went with the sales, but yeah, he actually did it as he sold some of his images, some of his big moments uh, as NFTs. So I'm not really sure about how that went, but mm -hmm. 
people are actually doing it and it's opening up an entire industry it's solving so many problems that have been there in in the art industry in the music industry i mean right now you can own a share of octopizo's album right yeah. that is what nfts do and whenever somebody is selling it for as long as you are you own a share you will get some money coming into you every day whenever there's a sale made so as you can see it's opening up the industry yeah. where you can actually and, and, get and to own shares up, of, uh -huh. it's gone. yeah you can get to own a share of people's music you can get to share a share to, you can get a share of people's work artwork picasso whatever it is right and we haven't even started talking about the metaverse we haven't started yeah. talking about in gaming where people are actually making so much money in gaming thanks to nfts mm -hmm. so we will actually get to talk about that i believe so oh. So, so is, it, is it some form of an investment or something? Um, do you mean like investment in terms of monetary or how yeah, do you, mean, how do you yeah, mean? Like, yeah, like, like you know, if, if, if I own a share of something, for example, I've got my money in it here. So are they, are they, are they, are they, you know, like sort of, in, you know, investment? Yeah, it's, a, it's an investment. Since you're buying something that you believe is of value yeah. and with time it will gain value, right? So mm -hmm. there is an entire industry where uh, we do have NFT collectors. NFT collectors are people who are always there, always out there searching for probably things that they feel will be of great value. Mm -hmm. And they can actually get to market it and sell it to other people, right? So yeah. probably they buy it from you next on. It's just an image of you. They bought it from you. Then from there, um, they go and sell it. And every time they sell it, Nixon will always have a copy. Um, yeah. Probably a certain loyalty trickling down to, to Nixon. So, um, yeah, it's an investment. It's something that people are doing big time. People are choosing it as a career path. And it's quite interesting, still new, but very interesting. And I really encourage anyone who's listening to, you know, take a look at it. Probably as we the bank, we'll get to look at some of the things that people can actually look at, look at uh, in the NFT world. Oh, all right, interesting. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, this, uh, as we move on, what is the connection between NFTs and, and crypto. What is the big connection between it? Okay, so the connection is um, remember when I was talking about non fungible tokens? So you find most of the times it, it uses the same concept. It's a token, it's, it's almost similar to cryptocurrencies uh, or cryptocurrencies that run on not that do not run on their own blockchain, right? For example, Bitcoin is not a token, Bitcoin yeah. is a coin. But uh, probably uh, any token or any crypto that runs on Ethereum, mm -hmm. it's not a crypt, it's not a coin, it's a token. So the same mm -hmm. same way, um, it's quite similar to the normal cryptocurrency that we know about. But you find that this is data, this is information. It's probably it's a piece of artwork that has been uploaded online, right? And you can always choose to transfer this data to other people if you wish. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have like a real market value as compared to the price of how Bitcoin, uh, probably Bitcoin has a real market value. People are actually actively buying and selling Bitcoin. As for NFTs, it's not the same. It's all about you, the, the, the price that you put on your tag. Let's say if you're selling this piece of art and you're selling it for $10, that, that's the price that it will actually go for. If you're selling it for five thousand dollars, that's the price you actually go for, mm -hmm. and you have to get people who probably will buy that piece of art, right? Yeah. Probably mm -hmm. have to do a lot of marketing. It doesn't have the like all these bids and buy orders behind it. Oh, okay. So, so they're like, uh, you know, uh, like they're they are, they are both like built on a blockchain. Yeah, they're all on the blockchain. So the blockchain is a, a public ledger, right? It's, mm. uh, it's like a book that can be accessed. It's like a ledger book that can be accessed by anyone. So mm. they all have to run on the, because the only way you can prove that this is legit, it has to be on the blockchain. And you know yeah. how blockchain works? Mm -hmm. Blockchains are always confirmed after every few seconds. For example, the Bitcoin blockchain, it's confirmed every 10, is it 10 seconds or 10 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So it has to be on the blockchain. If it's not on the blockchain, then it's not an unfungible token. Oh, interesting. Remember, you know, when we were starting, I was just uh, telling you how, you know, NFTs are becoming increasingly popular, you know, uh, uh, you know, for, 
artists, you know, to sell and 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 and, and buy and buy art. And from the figures I gave earlier, it gives you a clear picture of you know what the future like looks like. I know earlier on you had say uh, you said you know how it's still very new, but again the future looks by at least based on what you know I've been reading and what I've been covering. So for me, a sitting, you know, how would you describe you know the current state of NFTs in Africa and and and, and how the future looks like? I mean, Africa has been leading in terms of crypto adoption. Yes, Africa. Um, the tools that we have, tools of probably exchanging value, they're not so um, diverse, right? Mm -hmm. For example, right now, sending money from Kenya to probably Zimbabwe might be mm -hmm. quite tough. You have to go through the banks, you know, high fees, huge transaction costs, probably delays. So crypto has been, um, Africa has been leading or has been among the frontiers, has been leading the frontier in crypto adoption. Mm -hmm. right and the same same thing is happening with nfts so many artists are getting to learn about nfts we've been covering uh topics on nfts so many times mm -hmm. and we see that very many people are interested very many, many people are actually getting to ask about it it's happening in nigeria it's happening in um it's ha especially in nigeria there, there are so many people there i mean yeah. right now i feel that artists musicians have been granted the opportunity to know that you know what you can always verify that this thing is yours and it's growing in a very huge way i cannot give a quantifiable probably number mm -hmm. i cannot quantify it the rate at which it's growing but by looking at the number the level of interest people are coming in with it's actually quite i mean we are growing and it's growing many artists are getting into it um and it's, it's exciting yeah and, and definitely, thank God you mentioned Nigeria because you know I think Nigeria is one of the biggest markets when it comes to NFTs. Um, I mean, Finders did a very interesting research, and they were saying how you know I think 0.7 percent of Nigerians, you know, internet users currently own NFTs. And uh, you know, based on these figures you're seeing in Nigeria, I like to understand. I love to understand you know how you know other African markets are doing, and of course Nigeria, you know, the adoption keeps increasing each and every day. We are seeing the I mean the same thing in Kenya, you know. Are we going to see what is happening in Nigeria extend to other African countries when it comes to, you know, NFT's adoption? Well, um, I would just say like all countries in Africa are up to speed. Yeah. But Nigeria uh, is definitely among the few countries which, you know, um, very many people are actually getting into NFTs or probably get even hold NFTs. Mm -hmm. um, if you come to think of it, the state of how things are in Nigeria. I mean, it's very competitive. I mean, it's growing. So uh, from Kenya, I would say the next country, uh, from Nigeria, I would say the next country will be Kenya in mm -hmm. terms of um, adoption of cryptocurrency, uh, of NFTs and cryptocurrencies. Um, uh, there was this report that was recently launched. I think even Kenya was ahead, was way uh, ahead of um, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we see a lot of adoption in Kenya many meetups talking about NFTs, many artists reaching out to us, probably talking about NFTs, yeah. many artists also changing their profiles and sharing that you can now buy their uh, pieces of art on probably Rarible, OpenSea, um, is it UHive and many other platforms. So it's quite interesting. Uh, yeah. South Africa is also there um, mm -hmm. in terms of crypto and NFT adoption. Uganda is also there. Um, those are some of the countries that I actually really uh, have had or have seen or have interacted with people who are in the NFT space in Africa. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, Africa, we do not have robust networks probably of mm -hmm. uh, transacting with, with uh, each country. So I think crypto and this, uh, this whole blockchain uh, thing will bring a lot of solutions to the, to the African people mm -hmm. in ways that probably banks have never done. Uh, yeah, so it's quite interesting. Oh, interesting. And, and one, of the, one of the topics really touched, you know, uh, really covered when we were doing the last episode was our own regulations. I mean, previously we've seen, uh, you know, African government, for, uh, you know, just, you know, not being friendly to, to crypto. Uh, we saw that in Nigeria, we saw that, you know, in Kenya, and just until, uh, you know, recently, they are now saying, okay, now, we can now sit on the table and talk. We saw CBK the other day talk about how, how they are new inviting you know public opinions on the white paper they're working on you know 
for the for the for the you know digital uh, CBDC. Yeah, uh, in Nigeria we saw the not the e naira. So it's about regulations. Are we going to see the same regulations being applied to NFTs, or if there are really any regulations, do we have any that you know that you've read about or you've seen you know being you know uh, brought up brought up? Yeah, um, I mean we're still far since uh, it's really hard to regulate crypto. We have to be honest, right? Mm -hmm. um, probably the points of regulations will be decentralized uh, points of control, probably such as exchanges, mm -hmm. uh, which play an integral role in the African market. Since P2P, Africa is leading in terms of P2P, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen billions of dollars being transacted on P2P platforms such as Binance, Paxful, on a weekly basis, millions of dollars, sorry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in terms of re regulation of NFTs, you know, it, it's a really important topic because somebody always asks, what if I take a screenshot of that image and upload it? Yeah. Uh, how will you know? How, how, what will happen? So I think it's, it's still a very green space. Mm. Um, some of the platforms are probably relying on the uh, timestamp of yeah. when these specific assets were uploaded, mm -hmm. probably to try and gauge who was the, the very first person who uploaded it, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think there are other companies that, which are coming up in crypto that are trying to, you know, find ways of uh, copywriting NFTs, mm -hmm. right? Just to make sure that there is no, um, there is no theft of uh, art pieces or something like that. No, so, okay. and one one thing I really uh, know is that you know Africa has a shortage of, of, of collectors. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, African artists still have a market problem. Uh, you know, the number of creators is 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 big, of course, compared to art collectors, right? So, how do we make sure we get enough people to actually on board? How do we get more collectors on board? Okay, so how how do you go about this? You know, to become an, an NFT collector, it's a journey. It's not something that you just start. Um, so I think it's all about uh, there's, there's this uh, important section about NFT marketing, where it's always good to interact with communities um, just to learn how to become an, uh, an NFT collector, right? Mm -hmm. um, and NFT collection definitely needs money, right? It's an investment. You buy mm -hmm. somebody's pieces of art, or probably you're in a game, you buy the car, a very nice car, probably. Mm -hmm. The first thing would be to understand what NFT are, a later date, right? Mm -hmm. So um, NFT marketing or yeah, NFT marketing or NFT collection, you definitely have to be good at that. But I really co recommend people to start interacting with other NFT collectors out there, probably ask them what type of things are they looking at yeah. in the things that they are collecting, how are they able to gauge if something is of high value. Um, yeah, and one thing I, got, I forgot to talk about is that you find with NFTs, yeah, it's like... Uh, Whenever you mean something as an NFT, there's this aspect of scarcity that it will be the one and only probably version that will ever exist. Mm -hmm. So that also gives it value. All right, and I think I think one of the biggest challenges, uh, you know, uh, one of the biggest challenges, um, you know, about the African NFT space is, you know, uh, they call the they call the gas fees, right? Required to actually, you know, uh, commit in most of these NFTs marketplaces. You know, other than that, you know, what are, what are, what are the biggest challenges, you know, uh, NFT collectors facing, you know, in Africa? So, uh, just to get it right, are you asking about the fees that are involved probably with minting? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah. Is that is that one of the biggest challenge, or are there any other challenges that actually uh, the collectors face? I mean, it depends with the uh, platform that you're actually using, right? If you are using platforms that are running on Ethereum. And you might have a, a huge challenge with, with yeah. it, right? Uh, F gas fees are actually quite high, even for normal transactions, very, very high. Um, I only recommend anyone to go for it. But at the same time, there's this, you find that there are, there, there are so many transactions happening um, in the NFT space on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So you find that there, there are certain collectors who do not care probably about the small fees, the 500 fee. You know what? Because they know that whatever it is that they are, they are selling, they are minting, Probably they're mm -hmm. minting it for uh, five thousand dollars. Yeah. And whoever is buying this specific piece of art, they probably they know that he doesn't have a pro problem with fees, right? Because it's a high quality piece of art. But um, for people who are starting out, it's always good to scout for platforms which do probably do not run on Ethereum and do not uh, probably take so much fees. Probably mm -hmm. look for pr platforms running on Solana. NFT platform running on um, other other blockchains, 
yeah, they're probably going to match it uh, Ethereum layer two networks or something like that. All right, and uh, which one, which one, I mean, how do, I, how do you identify, you know, one, because in our last conversation, we were talking about peer-to-peer -peer platforms. Of course, we've heard reports of, you know, people being scammed and all that. So how do you identify one? And maybe are there ones that you can actually recommend? Yeah, so to identify one, it's always good to look at, um, just like at identifying any cryptocurrency, uh, in cryptocurrency projects that probably you'd like to invest in. Mm -hmm. First thing, you always have to look at how long the platform has been there for. Mm -hmm. Also look at the, um, if it has a token, look at the, the 24 hour trading volume, right? You have to make sure that you know uh, it ha if it has liquidity, right? Also look at the team. Does it have an existing team? Are they people that you see? Are uh -huh. they people that you can interact with, right? Um, also look for, you know, uh, recommendations, probably uh, platform that are on CoinMarketCap. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, CoinMarketCap.com. Um, mm -hmm. This is not the best way since many platforms can be listed there, but you can get so much data from coinmarketcap.com. Then you can also look at the, the platform platform's investors. This also gives a sense of if this platform is really okay to go with. Something that you should watch out for is NFT platforms are probably asking you to buy some things before you even mint. Probably they're asking you to buy their tokens before you even mint or something like that. Or other platforms that, uh, uh, let's say, they're promising returns on your NFTs, probably like 6,000 APY if you buy their token mm -hmm. and the mint your first NFT. Those are some of the things that you should be very worried about. Worried about. Oh, interesting. There's a question here, you know, you know, just as you know, we're almost waiting up. There's a question here from, you know, someone who asked me, how can I get started and earn through NFTs as an artist? Yeah, that's a really nice question. So the very first place will be to invest in your education, right? Like you are doing. Yeah. This is a nice thing. So, um, good job to whoever asked that question. The very first thing is education. Then from there, you can start exploring um, some of the different tools that you might need. Probably you need a MetaMask wallet, right? To interact with, because most of these NFT platforms, you, don't, you won't be asked to log in. You'll just be asked to connect to your wallet and probably uh, do some few KYCs since some of the platforms are really, 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 mm -hmm. really uh, that are on the KYC part. They want to know you so that you cannot go stealing people's content and selling it, right? Uh, then from there, uh, yeah, just learn how to interact with the tools, probably start interacting, joining some NFT communities out there um, on Discord, on Telegram, yeah, uh, search for people on Twitter, have a conversation with them. There are very many Twitter spaces ongoing, people talking about different things in NFTs. Yeah. So, yeah, so th that is our recommend. Just make sure that you're interacting with many people. That's the best way to learn. If you start minting your own uh, token, uh, your own non-fungible tokens, whatever it is, if, if probably the, if it's art, music, start sh sharing it with probably other people out there, market yourself. Um, there are some people who actually just buy out there, there are collectors who just buy random things, right? So you can mm -hmm. make sure you follow them, have a chat with them, like them, keep on, you know, interacting with them from time to time, then you never know who's watching. Yeah, and I'm sure, you always, I'm sure there are always, you know, uh, NFTs meetups happening in Nairobi, you know, I'm sure there are some always happening, you know, maybe in a weekend or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, so uh, then there's another question, I think you had, there's another question, someone asking, how can upcoming artists, Kenya, and, yeah, which you already answered, then how can someone out there who is not an artist join and start earning with NFTs? Do you have to be an artist to join? No, you don't have to be an artist. So you're talking about the different things in NFTs, NFTs in gaming, NFTs in music. Yeah. So probably they can venture into NFTs in gaming, right? Mm -hmm. So a game such as Zeta and Arena, it's on Play Store, you can start playing it. And remember the, the points that you used to earn back then, probably on playing Candy Crush, or <laughs> let's go way, way back. Um, <laughs> yeah. Nixon, do you, do you, have, you ever, have you ever played Snake Zenzia, like the, the, the Snake game? Yeah. The, remember the Nokia phones? Yes, yes, the Nokia phones. I was also talking to someone in the morning about that same thing. The snake game. Yeah, the snake game. So you see the points that people normally earn? With NFTs, these points are actual tokens that can be converted to money. So on games such as Axie Infinity, um, people are playing games there, right? Mm -hmm. With Axie Infinity, okay, uh, people in Philistines and, uh, are actually earning more than $100 just by playing games. Per day, 
So um, they can check out that on Arena, play it. It's it's a really nice game. You have to uh, you have to be really smart. It's actually quite interactive, mm-hmm. and it actually pays you for the games that you get. You can also sell some of the achievements you get. Probably some cool some cool kits, some cool shoes, some cool weapons. You can sell them. Yeah, uh, uh, for people who love probably fast shooter games, they can look at um, uh, games such as Decimated, Star Atlas. Yeah, they can play on their console, and they actually get also get to get paid. So this is what NFTs is doing. It actually makes the traditional side of things really boring because right now people are getting paid for playing games. You can only imagine. Oh, interesting. And you know it's good you know you spoke about that because one of the questions that I was about to ask me and I think I've I've been seeing I'm seeing someone asking the same question. You know, Kevin Maina, you know, is asking, you know, do you need to understand? I mean, one would ask, do you want you need to understand crypto to be involved in NFTs? Those are two different things. Yeah, you need to understand crypto. Um, you need to understand how it works. Since most NFT platforms, you have to interact with crypto. You have mm-hmm. to interact with crypto tools such as MetaMask wallet. Wallets, you have to interact with them, probably Trust Wallet. So you need to have a, a level of understanding of how this whole thing works. Because you're paid in crypto, right? Yeah, you are paid with crypto. As in everything you're interacting with, it's crypto. The money is crypto. Um, but I've seen some platforms here in Kenya that are trying to come up with a way of bringing in PESA into the NFT platform. Um, it's a really nice project. Well, I wouldn't recommend anything because mm-hmm. there are so many platforms out there. So if you want to invest probably in some NFT platforms, you can go to platforms such as Raribo and buy their cryptos, right? Let's say if you don't want to buy NFTs, you can buy the platform's token. Yeah. Because in a way, um, in a way, the platform is designed probably to bring value to the token, right? You can go to OpenSea, probably they buy their own token. And there are very many other NFT platforms out there. There's a social media platform known as Uhive mm-hmm. that actually mm-hmm. earns you money as you post. Uhive, yeah, it's very interesting. It looks like a metaverse, very interesting. And it earns you coins. Every time you post, every time you like somebody's big, every time you get in, it's mm-hmm. like an Instagram that pays you and their token has real value. Yeah. So, so much interesting. Yeah, so probably they can check out some of these platforms. Uhive, that is the name. It's on Play Store. Make sure you check it out. Ah, okay, interesting. Maybe now one last question is which which is the easiest the easiest NFT space for one to join and earn and from? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I only really, I only know which one is easy to be honest <laughs> because I mean there's so many things happening out there. Yeah. I've interacted with Crypto Kitties, and for me probably they were so way easy to breed some cards mm-hmm. and get some like I could buy two cards, breed them get some really unique card and sell it for, for a lot of um, F back then. Right now, probably it's not very... So I don't I, I wouldn't know how to gauge the easiness, but mm-hmm. some of the games that I talked about, they are quite easy. Just download and start playing. You can cash out. Um, you hide is just a social media platform. You go there, find memes. Like, just the normal way you spend on Instagram, mm-hmm. um, you get you get paid. And these tokens have value, real, real value that you can actually... But so imagine you if you're a social influencer, you mm-hmm. become the very first on, the, on platforms like this. Imagine if Instagram was paying you tokens and you're among the very first people on Instagram, how much would you have? So these are some of the questions that you should definitely ask yourself. So just interact with the platform pr- probably that do not require a lot of tools like MetaMask. Go to UHive, check it out. Go to uh, Data Arena, download the game, check it out. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And I think earlier on, I remember talking about, you know, you know, uh, of course, you spoke extensively about this, you know, basically NFTs, you know, showing proof of ownership. And I think we can't run away from talking, you know, you know, uh, talking about copyright. So how, how are the copyright framework with NFTs? Okay. Yeah, there's so many corporates. Uh, oh, the corporate world is also coming into NFTs. Mm-hmm. I've seen huge media anchors out there selling NFTs, their, their newspapers as NFTs. Um, I've seen big companies. I think some football state, uh, is it Manchester United, wants to start selling mm-hmm. some of their items as NFTs. So the reason I say it's gaining so much traction and value is because of the mainstream adoption or the mainstream noise. And this never happened with crypto. So with NFTs, everybody's talking about it. Um, many people are actually getting on board. They want to make sure that there is true authentic, authentic, authenticity or 
um, they can actually get to prove ownership of their platforms mm -hmm. um, or of the products that they have. And NFTs actually provide the best options for that. So corporates, yeah, are getting in and they're very much involved. And I don't think this will stop anytime soon. So you're going to probably do some form of investment, look for some of the NFT platforms that these corporates are going for and make sure that you probably, um, yeah, I wouldn't say buy them, but you shouldn't miss out on such opportunities. Right, without worrying about copyright, copyright, you know, and all that, copyright. Yeah. So, yeah, about the copyright, I mean, the corporates definitely have to take care of that as well. Mm. So we all know how corporates are. They have to make sure that you do not play around with your brand, yeah. that they are copyright, that they, yeah, that their products are on copyright, right? So yeah. I think most of the corporates are also taking care of that. Other platforms are coming on board and they are trying to find ways of making sure that some of these atrocities, probably copyrights being stolen, things like those don't happen. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. I think you got to understand, you know, I, I, I learned so much because I actually personally had so much knowledge about NFTs, so, but I got a chance to actually learn so much and I hope actually everyone who participated in this uh, webinar got, you know, uh, to do the same. So maybe, uh, you know, just as we wind up, any closing remarks, Brian? The, the world of finance is changing yeah. and it's changing right now. At this moment, as we speak, it is changing. I mean, since the inception of Bitcoin, I think this is where everything started changing. Yeah. Right now, even governments are very much aware. We've seen Ukraine raising so much money through yeah. Bitcoin, and they're actually recognizing Bitcoin as a, 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 a currency that has actually came to save them a lot, right? Getting, they're getting so much donations. Um, El Salvador made Bitcoin, a legal tender. So the world of finance is changing. And yeah. I would urge anyone who's there and who's listening, if you've, if you've started this journey, if you've started digging, uh, just to know what cryptocurrencies are or what Bitcoin is, man, first of all, don't get scammed. Don't go. Bitcoin is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Yeah. So don't get scammed by people who are telling you, invest in Bitcoin, get 1%, get 2%, or get 0.5% per day. No, that's a no. Make sure that before you put any money into any crypto or anything that you talk to the right people, ask as many questions as you can and don't, don't be driven by greed because many people lose money because of greed. Even in the NFT space, mm -hmm. many people lose money because of greed. Your promise that this, you'll be able to sell this coin for a certain amount of money and are not coin. Token for a certain amount of money and you buy it, then boom, nobody wants to buy whatever it is that you bought, right? So make sure that you do a lot of research the world of finance is changing. Make sure that you're part of it. Dig more, ask questions, participate in such type of events. And trust you me, you will not be left behind. And I don't, I don't think anyone will want to be left behind in, <laughs> um, in a financial revolution because the dollar is, be, is changing. The, yeah. the money that we, are, we trust is changing and we are moving to crypto. They, they so much, the re only reason as to why the whole crypto ecosystem is gaining so much value is because more people are getting to trust it. So the more trust we give it, the more value it will gain. And it means that value is moving from probably the dollar to cryptocurrencies. So what happens to the dollar? Or what happens to the fiat currencies we know of? They lose value. And you find yourself buying so much, so little money. Uh, you spending so much money for things like bananas, bread. Today you buy bread at 55. Yeah. Two years later, you're buying it 100 bob. What does that mean? It means that the value of the paper you're holding is losing value. And the piece of the bread that you are buying does not lose value. It remains the same. What is happening is the money that you're holding is losing value, that people want more of it for bread, right? So crypto is the other way around. It is scarce. They cannot print as much as they want, just like how they print dollars. So this is something that we all have to think about. It's happening. Um, yeah, and then at the end of the day, also make sure that you're taking care of yourself, take care of your mental health in crypto, because so much is happening and you have to be involved. So that is my parting shot, and I'm really excited for this session. Thank you so much for everyone who tuned in. Thank you so much, Crypto Africa, Sportsbet.io, BitCasino for making this and Bizin for making this a success. All right, thank you so much. And thank Brian. you so much, Nixon.
All right, thank you so much, Brian, and thank you actually everyone for joining us for these you know, sessions. You know, it's been very insightful. And, you know, we heard it from Brian, the world of finance is changing, and just before investing in NFTs or just even crypto, take your time, do your research, and make sure you take care of your mental health as well. So thank you so much for joining us. I uh, hope to see you in the next session. See you in the next one. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nixon. It was an interesting talk. We look, I look forward to having more of this with you. All right, sure, man. Thank you so much.